Okay, so we're going to start this lesson with the classic corner dots in the regular Zentangle ceremony. And we're going to do our pencil border, in pencil of course, and then we're going to do our string in the middle. So this, is, this would be the border version or a linear version. We're going to start on the left. I usually start on the left and this is now with your pen, your Micron 01. We're going to do sort of a diagonal right through the middle there. And I usually, on my end stroke, give it a little bit of a weight just so it's got a little bit of blackness there. Then we go to the right and do basically the same stroke and meet about here. Again, from the left over, a little bit of weight. It's the same thing over and over, very simple. Just as soon as you get your rhythm on this, it flows so fast. And it has this wonderful Moroccan woven look like some leather good being woven. And now we're going to, in true Zentangle fashion, we're going to flip it over. And this will, we'll use this as our first stroke. Go to the right and catch it here. gentle little weight on this where it meets. Don't overdo that because it'll it'll look uh, kind of messy I think. Just a little bit of weight, a little bit of black. And there you have between. To shade this this is a simple one. I'll probably go to, on the edges a little bit. And when you have the rest of your tangles in there, it'll just sort of pop out. Beginning between. Okay, so the next one we're going to do Again, we'll do our corner dots, our border with the pencil, and you can see that I'm not very uh, exacting about my border. I like it to be a little wavy, a little more um, organic as opposed to straight lines. So let's, let's try again a different kind of a border. So now we're going to use this as a stripe. I'm going to create some lines in here. And again, start the same way as we did before to fill up these areas. Flip it over. You can see I'm not being real, real careful, but once you get your rhythm in, you'll see how it goes together. I love this. It, it really, you can get lost in this pattern so fast because it just works so easily. And in true Zentangle fashion, this pattern is made up of one stroke. So most all of our tangles, our word for pattern, is 
one, two, and sometimes three re repeating strokes over and over and over again. So we're not trying to draw this. We're just doing one stroke and then repeating that same stroke and then repeating that same stroke. So in real time, you can see that it pretty much didn't take me very long to do this. You, you'll probably be a little bit more uh, cautious as you're beginning this, but once you get your rhythm, you can see you can, you can fill up just about any shape. And I'm going to just do this last one and then we'll do um, some shading on this, which would be a little bit different maybe have a different look than the last one. This is really my favorite right now. I throw it in everywhere. Okay, then we have a different kind of a border. Now with your pencil, I'm going to give it a little shade on each side. Sort of like a snake skin. What do you think, Rick? It's really nice. Or a bracelet, or... Yeah, you see this, you see this pattern in sterling silver jewelry a lot, right? You don't, don't you see yeah. that? That kind of a, almost a weave looking... And it's another great example of, okay, that's one stroke done over and over and over again. Just very deliberately, very one at a time, and you end up with this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, image. The next one I'm going to do is going to get fun. So say, well this time we're not going to use a border, we're going to go a little bit more uh, wild if you like. That's my string I'm going to use and what I found out is with this, um, with Betweed, you can fit, you can fill any section very easily and the, the way I do that is I start putting some diagonals around. Um, that yeah, that could be enough. Good. You think yeah, that could be enough? I'm gonna say that's enough. Okay, so now I'm going to fill each one of these sections. Now, the important part of this now is you have to remember to always start on the left, and if you can do that, you'll see what we end up with. So the repetition is that the first stroke starts on the left. If you just always do it that way, you never have to question it. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fill them in. If it feels good for you to move your tangle each time. The tile. Tile. I'm sorry, tile each time. You want me to say that over again? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Fill it up with the uh, little balls at the end too. You like that? Okay, yeah. that's what I'll do then. Okay, so now we're going to do our next section again on starting on the left. Now, when you start demonstrating this one to, to your friends, that's when it starts to be magic. Sort of like uh, Rick's paradox. It has some because. When, when the sections are together, then the, the weaving becomes something else. It, it yeah. looks like it's shared across the, the uh, each individual in each individual section. Okay, again, we're going to start with that first stroke from the left. Yeah, a little bit of weight, and. When you're practicing, you can try it with no weight and then with a little bit of weight and see what the difference is and see how you like it. So I don't know if you can see what's happening here. Well, it, it's like a, an automatic shading. It just suggests that it is disappearing under the other one. Right. Now, in such a small amount of time, we filled that large section with something that's pretty dynamic. And it works every time. I can fill any set, any shape section. And what do we have? We have a star. It's just beautiful. And Rick was saying that we could do 
this thing where I, I love to just fill them with beautiful orbs afterwards. So you don't have to try to force the tweed to go all the way down to the lower section. You can use this tangle and just fill it up in here. So when I pick up my pencil now to shade this one, perhaps we would shade the points and come in be careful not to get your your shading everywhere you want to you want dark and light but if you start rubbing it all over the whole thing it'll just look gray so make sure when you're you're rubbing your pencil not to get it where you don't want it isn't that pretty very cool be tweed. Be tweed. I like this tile because it's so um, dynamic in the black and the white. The shading is really beautiful, but, but remember to leave white space so that you can see the contrast between the black and the white. Okay, I love this tile because it has a nice contrast between straight lines and curvy lines. Um, I try to have both in all of my Zen tangles. I just think that it, it's interesting and it, you don't get stuck in doing one pattern. This between is the suggestion of how we shaded this gives this a, uh, a rolling feeling like the Zen tangle is kind of going up and down and that was easily achieved by just adding um, shades before and after these bars. And this isn't the only way that this could be shaded, but it's a suggestion and it gives you some place to start. And this is just a party. It looks like somebody had a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of movement going in here. Um, this is just, it looks like it's just bursting trying to come at you. Um, the energy in here is just wonderful. And, and then, and then <laughs> with this, uh, movement here with a little bit of not so structured tangle and it, it seems like it's just kind of got away from itself. It's just a fun, fun Zen tangle. It's fun to look at. It was fun to create. And this is a good example of one that we started without a border and it has the string and if you if you remember what the string looked like and you, you can see where the string was one of the reasons that we like to do our string or suggest doing the string in pencil is that when you're done it totally disappears but it provided the structure for how everything took place you can see the original string came here and here and then there was a, a circular uh, piece here but i had decided that i didn't want to use it so i just totally disregarded it and added my vertigo over here just because I felt that that's what it needed. Um, so your string, don't forget, is always a suggestion. It's sort of a, a direction of where to go, but it's not a limitation. So make it your friend, use it when you want, don't look at it when you don't want, and then just have fun.